All right, so chapter three, section two, um, the, the two main topics are uh, what we call Rolle's theorem and the mean value theorem. And the mean value theorem is quite incredible, actually, and uh, has some far-reaching implications. And uh, the proof of the mean value theorem requires this Rolle's theorem. So that's where we will start, right? So uh, you might, uh, well, you might think of Rolle's theorem as the statement, well, what goes up must come down. Um, but of course, all analogies are going to start to fall apart if you push them too far in, in mathematics. But the idea is pretty simple. It just says, look, let's just assume that some function is continuous, right, from A to B. Right, so I'm not going to draw it yet, but I will be able to draw this function without ever lifting my stylus. Okay? Now, it's differentiable from A to B, but not, but, uh, not including A or including B. So in that case, that's interesting because uh, that, that may mean that, look, you might not be able to take the derivative at A and you might not be able to take the derivative... Um, at B, but you can take the derivative from, of all other points from A to B. All right, ready? So let's get to this, this last part, and this is where, where I'm going to start to draw. So it says, let if, or no, let's say, if F of A is equal to F of B. Let's start there. Now, do you agree with me that I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and put two dots here. I, ha I know I haven't drawn my my function yet. But f if f of a is equal to f of b. Now in this case, both f of a and f of b both equal zero, right? Don't you agree with me? In this case, f of a is equal to f of b. Now it says that then there is at least one number somewhere between a and b that we're going to we're going to call that there's there there's at least one number that we call c such that f prime of c is equal to 0 and now listen if you'll just watch me draw this graph you're going to say oh man that's that's like an elaborate duh of of, of course that makes sense Okay, so you're starting to draw your graph, okay? So let's, let's assume, so your graph looks something like, something like this. Now you're increasing, now don't you agree with me that if f of a equals f of b, at some point in time this graph is going to have to turn around and come back down, right? Don't you agree? Like it, if you throw something up in the air, at some point in time it's going to start to come back? That's the only way you're ever going to get f of a to equal f of b. So that is that is that is really interesting. That as long as those conditions are met, and f of and you get this, and f of a is equal to f of b, then there has to be some c value, right? Some x value in here, where what, where the derivative is equal to zero. Beautiful. Now that's beautiful. And it's intuitive, right? See, I told you, stick with those, draw out those theorems, draw out those definitions, and you'll see that a lot of this is a lot easier to grasp than you originally thought. Ready? So Broll's theorem, it gives us the conditions that are going to guarantee us the existence of extrema, Right? In, in interior points of a closed interval. So that is a maximum value. I could have also drew it as a minimum value and if I drew a different function. But this is, a, is a, some conditions that guarantee us ways of finding these uh, extrema. So I don't think we're going to dwell here much longer. Let's just jump in and, and see if we can 
knock out this example. So how do we approach this? So it says, find the two x-intercepts of the following function and show that f prime of x is equal to zero at some point between the two x-intercepts. Now, if you jump into this problem and you just find me the two x-intercepts, you are missing the point of this theorem, right? I know you know how to find x-intercepts, okay? That's not the, 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 the game that we are playing. So, uh, so f is differentiable uh, on its entire domain, so let's just jump in. We're going to take f of x. Now, since we are interested in the x-intercepts, Well, if there's one thing I know about an x-intercept is that it has no y, it has no height, right? It has no vertical distance. y is definitely equal to 0. So I'm going to set my function equal to 0. I'm going to go ahead and factor. And now I know that when x is equal to positive 2, y is 0. And when x is equal to positive 1, y is 0. Okay, so let's just draw a number line here. So let's assume that right here is 0. And we'll say over here is 1. And over here is 2. So when x is 1 and when x is 2, I know that this function is crossing the the uh, x-axis. Now, let's go farther here. Let's actually find the critical numbers, right? Or let's say, let's actually, my apologies, let's find um, the derivative and what makes the derivative equal to zero. So let's start with f prime of x. All right, well, that's an easy derivative to take. So that's just going to be 2x minus 3. And now let's go ahead and set the derivative equal to 0. All right, add 3, divide by 2. So x is equal to 3 halves. OK, that's interesting. Wait, is 3 halves in between 1 and 2? 3 halves, 1.5 it is. Indeed it is. So. Notice it said that and show what you, so this is the C value, right? And notice that there is a C value between 1 and 2 where what? Where the derivative is equal to 0. That is Rolle's theorem. Not, not that bad. Let's do one more. So in this case, right, let's, let's go ahead and it says, in this case, let the function be defined as x to the power of 4 minus 2x squared. And we want to find all values of c in the interval negative 2 to positive 2 such that f prime of c is equal to 0. Okay, so when you sometimes when you don't know how to start a problem, start by drawing a picture graph it, do some, well, I'll say when in doubt in a calculus class, take a derivative. Okay, so let's just assume right here is negative 2. Okay. All right, so what are we doing right now? So, so I have, so here's my interval from negative 2 to positive 2, and I'm trying to find the c values that are somewhere in there, right, where the derivative equals 0. All right, so first thing I need to do, remember Rolle's theorem. Remember it started off, it said, if f of a is equal to f of b. So this function's continuous. This function is differentiable over the, over the interval. But I, right now, I need to know if f of a is equal to f of b. All right? That's the if part of that statement. So 
In other words, in this case, we want to know does f of negative 2 equal f of positive 2, right? I need to be able to make that statement first. Um, and in this case, if you, you can always plug 2 in and then plug negative 2 in, and they, this is a true statement. f of 2 does equal f of negative 2. They both equal 8. Okay, so, all right, beautiful. Rolle's theorem, all the conditions have been met. Let's take the derivative. So f prime of x. Well, that's an easy derivative to take. That's just going to be 4x cubed minus 4x. All right, now let's just, we, we're, we know that we're going to set that derivative equal to 0. And let's just make life easier on us by factoring everything out. So I'll factor out a 4x. And then I have x squared minus 1. So that's, that's the difference of, two, um, difference of two squares. So that's just going to be 4x times x minus 1 times x plus 1. All right. So let's figure it out. So what would cause what x values would cause your derivative to equal zero? Let's we'll start with this first part. Well, if x is zero, then f prime equals zero. If x is one, then f prime equals zero. If x is negative one, then f prime is equal to zero. Do you agree with me that zero, one, negative one all cause your derivative to equal to zero? Now, is 0, 1, and negative 1. Are they, all of them, in this interval from negative 2 to positive 2? Yes, right? They all are, right? You have a negative 1 here. You have a positive 1 here. You have a 0 here. All of those are in the interval. So we are done with that question um, of using Rolle's theorem. Now, so what I want to do is uh, I would like to show you the proof of the mean value theorem. You do need Rolle's theorem to prove the mean value theorem, and it's not that bad of a proof, but because, because of these, the uh, you know, because these are, I've gone from a lecture classes to this online class, as of right now, I'm going to skip the the proof of the mean value theorem, and I'm just going to give you uh, like a geometric interpretation. Okay, so will you at least give me whatever attention that you have left? Since we're going to skip the proof, I'm making cutting you a deal. We're going to skip the proof, but will you give me your enough attention so that I can at least give you some intuition of what this theorem says? All right, ready? Let me read, and then let's do in other words. So here, if your function's continuous, right, you can draw it without lifting your, your pencil, on some closed interval A to B. Ready? I'm going to go ahead, and I'm going to write, let's say this is A. I'm going to make it capital A, just so it doesn't look like nines. So let's say this is A, and over here is B. Okay, so... So I, when I get ready to draw this function, what I'm saying is it, it is continuous on that interval A to B. And it's also differentiable on that interval, except maybe at the end point. So I can take the derivative of every single point in there, um, uh, but maybe not possibly at the end points themselves. And now here we go. Here we go. So if all of that is uh, in place, then there exists some number C. Here it is. There's some number C in that interval. And this is beautiful. Ready? Such that the derivative of C is equal to, what is that? What is that? You've seen that before. That, that's just rise over run. Right? That's just y sub 2 minus y sub 1 over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. 
And now, please let me show you how freaking awesome. You see how excited I get when I, how awesome this is. So I'm gonna just draw some, some curve here. Ready? So let's say from here to here. So what this is saying, that this is actually not very well drawn. I'm gonna move. Will you entertain yourself for a second? Don't, don't you pick up your phone yet. I'm just gonna move my C over a little bit. Okay, and now I'm back. So now what we're saying is there is some point there's some point in that interval where the instantaneous rate of change is equal to the average rate of change. This is why a police officer gets to write you a ticket. Right? They they'll get they get to they'll get to write you a ticket. If they uh, even though they're uh, you know they're, they're clocking you while you're while you're moving. Um, the idea of an instantaneous uh, rate of change, right? So you would have to, it does take time for the signal to get from your car back to their scanner. So some amount of time has elapsed, I agree. But they're writing you, they're writing you a ticket because they caught you speeding, meaning they, they said at some time you were speeding. They weren't, they weren't saying that over an interval you were speeding. They're right, they're making a claim about you were speeding at, the time they clocked you. But even with that argument of the instantaneous uh, rates of change, the idea that the mean value theorem says, look, there is a point where your speed, right, your, let's say your velocity, is equal to the average velocity. That is... The, uh, I'll say that so the slope here so this is m sub 1 there's also a slope here m sub 2 it's basically saying that there is a point in there where your average velocity was equal to your instantaneous velocity as long as your conditions are met all right in fact we're actually going to do a, a problem um, uh, when we come back we're going to do a problem where uh, there's a I believe it's a tractor and trailer is clocked at a certain um, speed at, at at a certain at time one, and then it, this, the same truck is clocked by another car at a speed at time two. And although neither uh, not although neither one of the patrol officers, the first car or the second car, although either neither one of them clocked this truck driver speeding they're still going to write them a ticket because the average speed was, um, or the average velocity was higher than the, um, the posted speed limit. So I'll show you what I'm talking about when we get back. I will see you.